And and you you know you you worked on on this personal story uh, that we're seeing to photos, but you also worked with uh, uh, with Louisa on a couple of other stories about the uh, the uh, coming anniversary of of the Iraq of the American invasion in Iraq. Uh, one of the question being asked is how you two work together on the ground when you're tackling like stories of this magnitude. Louisa. <laughs> That's so someone. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we also we started this assignment and halfway through there was an earthquake in Syria and Turkey. So we sort of pivoted sure. there and then returned um, after uh, 11 days. 11 days to this. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting as a, you know, as a print reporter, I've definitely had to learn over time how to work with photographers. Um, you know, silly as that sounds, I think we us we often can assume that we just charge around with our pens and that is the most important thing. Um, and it is important, but the best stories are the best collaborations. And, you know, I've, had to learn how to give the photographer time as well and the thing that's lovely about working with Salwan is it's very instinctive you know um my work involves a lot of uh sit down interviews often they're very static that is great for me great for the sort of detailed reporting but it's not great for a photographer so um you know Salwan was very good at kind of sitting down and listening in when he needed to, but also roaming around and ultimately kind of coming back. And I think, you know, looking at the the photographs I've seen for the stories that we're publishing in the coming days for the anniversary, it's a, you know, he he knows when to stay and he knows when to to roam as such. Um, and and it's a gift. I think like hearing people's story is so important. A lot of times I tell this even to like when I teach photography or when I talk to people, it's so important to, I know sometimes it's like interviews are boring, but like you, you don't know the benefit of sitting down and learning and also paying respect to these people, taking the time for you to listen to you and 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 giving you, you know, pouring their life, uh, their life story, talking to you about their suffering. And I learned that, you know, as I, grew as a photographer to the importance of learning about the story, the importance of, you know, giving time when people are talking to you because, you know, you don't want to charge in, direct it. It's not a movie set, <laughs> you know, direct everything. Oh, I want to take pictures. Like, I, I've never worked that way. And um, I hope people don't work that way. And um, with with Luis and I, like uh, as as we worked on this other story that you're not seeing the photo, we were literally investigating something that was never done before. It was hard. It was there's no data, barely anything, and and how do you uh, you know photograph something that happened long time ago? And and thankfully with my work through investigative, which is I do a lot of these stories that like, you know, investigate something from 20 years ago or something. You learn how to kind of be creative, learn how to kind of uh, tell a story and and know the moment of of when something is important to that need to be documented. And, um, you know, L Luis and I, we never said, hey, Luisa, I, I didn't get enough time to photograph something. It all happened, happened naturally. And and that's the important of, of partnership and trust in each other. And we had an amazing team in Baghdad. Everybody knew what we need. Everybody knew how to get it. And even though it was the assignment when we first started, we thought it may be impossible. We may need to change the story because there's no data. There's no such a thing that was ever done research on it. Yeah. But I think as well, people, one thing that people who maybe don't work in the industry sort of don't always realize is just how much time a photographer and a writer end up spending together. You know, it's not the case that you do something and then the photographer sort of turns up and, you know, clicks the button a few times. With the greatest of respect to my photography colleagues. <laughs> um, you know, it is often 20 being together 24 7 for one week, two weeks. What, what were we three and a half you know like it you know so that. you end up really getting to know the you know how the other person works um it's really important that you get on with each other um and 
I think it worked well. And, I, and when you met me, it was a week after I've been already in my country. I was over the moon. I was happy. It was like, oh my God, this is <laughs> home. I'm eating great food. I'm working. I'm fine. Not jet lag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I found three of my former homes. I saw my old school, like all these things that I never imagined still exist were there for me. So I was in, in a really good mood, let's say. And, uh, and and also like sad and, and uh, frustrated about the situation things were, but, uh, but, you know, and, you know, getting along is definitely uh, is such an important thing. And also, you know, you, be, you, you do the work and, and uh, in the most ethical and professional way, that's all we can do. Um, uh, one question, a, a technical question for you, Salwan, um, you know, like you, you mentioned, you used, uh, the iPhone, uh, one of the reason was because you wanted to be present, uh, but can you tell us why you decided to, to photograph this in black and white and also in square format? So, um, Part of when, how I learned photography when I started in, in Detroit, it was I went to a film school. So I, I never learned digital photography or color photography. I started in black and white. And through that, I developed my love for, you know, that type of photography, shooting with medium format, which is usually it's a square and it gives you that kind of um, uh, that kind of look. So when when the first project started i used the phone because I, as i said i wanted to be around my family but also it was a, a a camera that's always with me as i documented scenes things i'm seeing uh i'm not one of those photographers who walk around with a camera around their neck um i just i'm not I'm, that's not me and i just you know when i'm working at my camera or with me like in the back but uh, the phone uh, was uh, was the easiest way for me to always be present and have that camera with me without really feeling like I'm at work. So my family yeah. doesn't yell at me. <laughs> but the black and white, it just because for my love for black and white photography, which is it, it, it was one thing I loved growing up and learning how to do. And, and the square format? The square format comes from a shooting in medium format, as well as when Instagram was first released was all square. And um, I just want to keep the look and I just wanted to clear something. The reason why this looks like this is because it's a continuing body of work for uh, from the past 10, 11 years of documenting my family, uh, my life and uh, things I see every day. And that's why I wanted to keep the look until this last chapter. Excellent. Of course.